Hi everyone, my name is Dustin Wilson. I'm a data engineer based in New York and I'd like to take you through this project that I've been working on as part of the Redis Hackathon over the last couple of weeks. So what you're seeing now is a live view of the Helsinki transit system with individual uh, buses shown in blue. Uh, each bus is processed through Redis using Redis time series, Redis streams and Redis pub sub. And we can hover over any given bus and see some data about it. We can also click on any given bus and see the historical positions and speed. Uh, you can see right here, this bus was going quite fast based on the lighter color. And here it slowed down a bit based on the darker color. In addition to having these live layers, we also have some layers that are based on either historical data or static data. I'll just disable the live layer to show those for a moment. Uh, we have this layer, which I'm calling neighborhoods. Neighborhoods are generated approximately hourly and are processed from a Redis stream that writes behind to disk. Um, well, writes behind to post GIS, um, and then the tiles are regenerated every hour. Um, these tiles have the same coloring scheme as what you just saw, where lighter colors represent generally faster areas and darker colors represent slower areas. It's no surprise that sort of downtown is the darkest area here and the outskirts of the city are a bit lighter. Let me turn that off for a moment. And then finally, we have these GTFS layers. These are static layers uh, that adhere to what's called G, uh, the Generalized Transit Feed Specification, which was developed at Google and is just a way of standardizing how locations in transit systems are represented. This is um, not so much a feature of a Redis data pipeline, but it's quite useful when combined with the live layers because it allows us to compare individual buses with maybe where there were recent stops um, and uh, exactly see what routes they're following. So let's go through the technical implementation of this. Uh, we use a Golang broker to process incoming messages from Helsinki into Redis. We chose Golang because it's got great concurrency support. Uh, we can just add more workers as needed. Uh, during rush hour, we might see upwards of a thousand messages a second. Early in the morning, we may see as low as maybe 10 to 15 messages a second across the entire system. Uh, after this broker writes into Redis, it goes into a few locations. Uh, first is a pub sub channel. Uh, this is used for live locations. Uh, this is pretty simple. Uh, the broker publishes uh, an event to a pub sub channel. Uh, the live location API over here subscribes to the same message. And then when a client connects, they're receiving the same data passed through uh, via WebSocket. For time series, what we do is we save each bus's uh, or each trip's uh, current speed and current location in a time series. Um, and then uh, every 15 seconds using a compaction rule, we standardize that uh, so that we're not storing differentiate uh, different sort of uh, intervals of data for any given trip. Uh, we're able to store locations in time series by coercing the location to geohash and the geohash to an integer representation of the geohash. Uh, then we also write to streams. Uh, this is what I mentioned briefly. We write to streams and then we have a gears function that clears that stream every five seconds or so, writes to post GIS, and then we have a cron job that will occasionally take this data from post GIS generate a static tile like what you saw for the neighborhoods um, and then save that uh, for the tiles API to read and then serve to the front end. Uh, finally, we have a base map that's based on Cardo data, which is just an external data provider and uh, offers a few of their base maps for free.